Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we want to welcome you to the greatest show on earth in Sports Unplugged. I am your host extraordinaire, the Dustin Legend, Leon Rogers. Right in front of me is the man who pushes all the buttons and makes it happen. Big man, we got guests. We got friends I in the building. I love it when we have friends in the building. <laughs> we got friends Let's in the building. Let's start with the regular old bum that always <laughs> hangs out with us all the time. BC, Brian Crawford, Slam Magazine, number one stunner from Englewood. That's me. Twitter gangster. We'll whoop your ass if in we real see you life. talking regulars. In real life. <laughs> in real. Please believe that. And and to my left, I'm so honored to have her here. Med discover her. Now we're going to make her a star. It's, gone. it's over with now. Wait, done, she about to blow you up. about to blow up. You just wasn't plugged. Chrissy Harper, how you doing today? I'm doing let, great. You know, before we even get started, let everybody out there know what you do, how you do, and how you started doing it. Well, right now I work for Comcast Sportsnet. And I write a report for Slam Magazine. I started doing that in January. Previously, I was working for the Chicago Bulls in community relations. And before that, I worked for Wasserman in L.A. See? Just, and I hoop for Graham. And with Neon. Was you that. nice, though? Great. Look me up. 14 splinters. My three, my three is ridiculous. Somebody said that you were a very versatile player. Mm -hmm. You could play guard, forward, and center. Oh, I don't know about that. You could guard the water cooler, look forward to playing, and sit at the center of the bench. There you no, go. No, I'm just saying. That's what, <laughs> that, that was a good one. Like that, that was a good yeah. one. That yeah. was a good one. I don't mean that at all, though. It's she cool. had 14 splinters That's and all six good. blisters you in the game. You played in the swag. You got out. Yes, I played you know in the swag. Saying? Now, um, did you, uh, and I have to ask this, because a lot of times female basketball players get a bad rap. You're a very attractive young lady. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? You never went Britney Griner, did you? No, I didn't. Okay. I don't have anything against it, but shout out to Britney. I, you know, stay on this side. Shout of out to Britney Griner, dude can hoop. <laughs> she hey. can hoop. Yes, she, she can. Hoop. She can hoop. Do you think she's gonna change <laughs> women's basketball? She has the potential to, yes. See, I honestly believe that people like and and Mad is gonna get mad at me because we're discussing WNBA. <laughs> I, I, I don't like that. I don't. I don't, right. I, I don't I'm don't, more excited about. This I don't like this season. at all. Why? I'm more excited about this season than I ever have been since the days of Teresa Weatherspoon mm -hmm. and and Cynthia Cooper and them play. Well, let me tell you why. Because <sighs> the caliber of players we got coming in, Brittany Griner, Della here? Don, that's at the sky. Shot Sky's gonna be formidable this year. Diggs yeah. is coming in. But then you have the players that are already there. You still got the Candace Parkers of the world still there. Sylvia Fowles is still there. You still got goons in the league. And that's why I don't think Brittany Griner is just going to come in and step on people's toes like you think. I think players like Tina Thompson, who's old school, still can get dirty. Yeah. Sylvia mm -hmm. Fowles, Candace Parker. My girl, uh, uh, Simone Augustus. Yeah. Like, there's some goons out here that's going to test it that. Is. You know, and see how dope she is. And then, of course, you know, the beautiful Skylar Diggins. Skylar I mean, Diggs. <laughs> what seven, up, though? Seven-figure deals already and ain't even laced them up yet. And she signed up. with Jay-Z? I want to, you know, and pardon me, it may sound chauvinistic, and, you know, I really hope she gets like a Victoria's Secret oh, endorsement. I agree. Oh, my goodness. With like Skylar. Why can't she get Under Armour? Skylar. Skylar. That's Under Armour. cool, too. They make drawers for women. Go ahead, Skylar. Do you? Oh, gosh. <laughs> What what kind of endorsement Brittany Griner gonna get? Uh, <laughs> Old Spice. Old Spice. She, we we're gonna put her on the back of a horse. No, she's gonna be like, look at look at your man. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I'm just playing Brittany Griner. I'm a big I'm a big fan. Word up, like. Hey, she like she like Pat from Saturday Night Live. Yeah, but hey, be, man, Brittany, man, she clean up nice too. She threw on the white suit like Bron Bron. It was dope. Stop, man. She didn't have a white suit on like Brian. <laughs> I don't know. Or was it more of a Joakim Noah suit? She it was it was it was more like Brian. Okay, it was man. More like Brian. Hey man. Brittany yep. said it. She said it on his but she like I hey look, man, I'm out here. Yeah, my man I'm was checking you out. My man. And, I, and I'll whoop BC over you. <laughs> yeah, I'm t hey, my man was clean. I can't even argue. Yeah, she owned it. She owned she it. She did. All right, all right. Enough of that. Sorry, Brittany. Thank you. Let's get, Jeez, <laughs> my man. Let's get into it, man. Uh, playoffs going on. We got some great series going on, especially yes. out west. We'll get to that later. But in the east, uh, we got one going on against the Knicks and the, the Indiana Pacers. Indiana looks like they might be about to close the jump shooting Knicks out of the building. But let's talk about the hometown team, the Chicago Bulls. I'm going to piss a lot of people off. Uh -oh. We were at the game. We were all at the game yes. watching it. And I put on my Twitter, which caused a 
backlash on me. I said, Chicago fans suck. And I'm tell you why. I cannot stand this city's fans because they get delusional. They get super delusional. Game one, Bulls win. Under man, under staff, infirmary unit. Mm -hmm. Guts, glory, all that. And I look at everybody and I'm like, the Miami Heat were off for like two a week. weeks. A yeah. week. Waiting on you guys. They came back, tried to shake the rust off. And I said, it wasn't that you guys locked them down. They missed shots. They missed shots. I said, now let's go back two years ago when you had the MVP on your team. You won the first game of the series, mm -hmm. then you got swept four. The same thing is about to happen again. Then yeah. game two comes, oh, it's the ref's fault. Refs don't cause a 39-point blowout. I'm sorry. <laughs> game three comes, oh, we played with guts and blah, 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 blah. You lost by 10. Game four, you're losing. You're getting your ass handed to you at home. The arena's dead silent. Nobody's staying in it. And then it becomes, oh, they're sick. They're hurt. Bulls fans are delusional. They get on my nerves with that because it was all good just a week a ago. A week ago. And now, so how, how did you feel about the game? And, and what, what are some of the changes you see coming up in the future? Because you cover the Bulls a lot. You and BC, that, you know, I'm, I'm not as privileged as you all to be <laughs> get media passes. That's mess. You just don't show up. Man, man listen, man. You hey, were listen. there. I was. I was there one time. None of the players <laughs> want to talk to me. I Nate Robinson was... pushed me out the way. Nate He's like, man, man, move around, dog. Move around. Talk like BC and Chrissy, man. <laughs> you know, so what do you think, Chrissy? Like, what is your outlook? How, what has your outlook been on this series? And, and what do you think some major flaws and things that the Bulls will have to address in the offseason? Well, I think there it was just not enough bodies. They didn't have enough bodies. Injuries really plagued the team. You know, they they go a lot a lot off of energy. I think the energy was way down the last game. You know, the home crowd was late arriving, so I don't think they were able Didn't to Didn't wear red. Well, <laughs> they were late arriving. They, the team wasn't able to feed off of their energy like Joakim, how he does. And I think that played a lot of part into it, too. And then, I mean, they're they're all injured. They're out, out there broken. But, so, but, but that same argument you give, yeah. game one, the same team. They're injured and broken. Yeah. And all I hear is, yeah, it's all about coaching and it's whoop whop the bam and bah, we going to the chip. Like, yeah. But like you said, Miami, they were rusty. They were off for a week. So I think that played a lot of played a lot into it, too, that they had such a long break. Right. And the Bulls had just played that Saturday. Right. Two days. They just played that Saturday. They come back and they play on Monday. They catch Miami slipping. I mean, that's basically what that was. Do, do you think that the Bulls came into this series saying if we could find any weakness? On the Miami Heat, that weakness would be they shy away from physical play. And let's go in here with the intention, because when we broke the streak, when the Bulls broke the streak, they're thinking to themselves, we played, we got very physical. We got up close and personal with LeBron. Mm -hmm. We fouled him. We we got in D. Wade's shirt. We pushed, kept Chris Bosh <laughs> off the blocks. Do you think they came in with that same mentality and it kind of backfired on them? Miami's handled the physical play well? I mean, I think... That was their only chance, really and truly, to try to get under their skin, you know, try to get under LeBron's skin. You know, Dwayne Wade is not 100%, so try to bump him around. You know, Chris Bosh don't really like that. He's kind of a jump shooter. So, I mean, I feel like— Chris, I think Chris Bosh likes physical play. Stop it. Um, he he might, though. But, uh, yeah, man, so, I mean, that was their only that was they only option. That's all the they had physical left. Play. You still going. Not <laughs> You still going? Nah, I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah, that was their only play, man. You know, to get physical with them. Um, they obviously didn't like it, like you said, when they broke the streak. They had LeBron complaining. I think that might have actually worked against them because now the refs are calling everything a lot more closely. They're trying to make sure star the league don't get hurt. Chrissy, this team, this team healthy with Derrick Rose and everybody playing on deck. Do they still take the same philosophy going with physical play, or do they try to match up and play, you know, regular basketball and not make the game so chippy? I think they would have matched up regular. I mean, I don't think they necessarily went in there like, okay, you guys, let's you. yeah, let's try to push them around and do this and that. I just think they went in there like, we got to play hard. You know, yeah. like Joe said, we play grimy. It's not always pretty, but right. we get the job done. Unfortunately, this time they couldn't. Here's, here's the thing. If they were fully healthy and you were going up against this Heat squad with, with Dwayne Wade kind of hobbled, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd give the Bulls a chance. I would too. I, I, I wouldn't. And I think I, I'd give the Bulls a chance just I still, because of, I still wouldn't. I, I'd give the Bulls a chance to, to take out the Heat with with Dwayne. take them out or go seven. 
Take him out. No. With Dwayne Wade, think, with Dwayne Wade, with Dwayne Wade's giving them right now, I'd give the Bulls a chance. If the Bulls okay. were fully healthy. I get that. But yeah. here's the thing. You're saying what Dwayne Dwayne Wade is giving them. And I can on the flip side say, but the potential what he has to give them. Dwayne Wade's struggling right now. Oh, I did. He's not 100%. Mm-hmm. But at any point in time, that's one person on that team that could go for 30. That can go for 35. Right. You name me somebody else on the Bulls. If Nate Robinson is your second best option, I'm okay. We're going to roll the dice on that one. It's like New York New York with Melo. After Melo, if your next best option is J.R. Smith, I'm okay with those chances if I'm a coach of the other team. So, well, I, like Shane I still Battier see you had the same problem. Well, like Shane Battier said, Shane Battier said that you know we know that Nate Robinson's the only guy on that team that can push the ball yeah. and, and it can hurt us. So what we did was we double Nate. send everybody out. We right. sent everybody right. at Nate. Nate didn't have an answer for that. I feel like after Game Three when they lost by ten, and, you know, you go in the locker room and you look around and you look at the faces. I really felt like. Them boys felt like, man, if we was 100%, we could probably beat them. Yeah, I mean, I didn't feel defeated. They didn't feel that way two years ago, though? Mm, two years ago, I think they was just shocked. I, I mean, thought, in the Eastern Conference Finals, two yeah, years ago, I felt they like they thought they was way. a better team, and then LeBron kind of, you know. Bullied them. Flexed his muscles a little bit. So, what's changed from LeBron from that? And actually, I think LeBron has gotten more of a, a, well, a murder ink instinct well, no, no, but remember, than two yeah, then, years yeah, ago. Yeah, two years ago, but the thing is, that, that series— it was Chris Bosh also that absolutely killed us yes. in that series. So now, when I look at this Heat team, and I'm trust me, I'm not a Heat fan, but when I look at this Heat team, I see LeBron who can score and facilitate, bring the ball up. I see D Wade who's not playing at his best, but still can score and handle the ball. I see Chris Bosh, a big man who can lead the break, handle the ball, and score. Then I go to the bench. We forget old Ray Allen. <laughs> That that sits there, and when in when in doubt, you know he's gonna put him down. Shaw Lewis is a bum, you know. Birdman, you know, Birdman, he brings a level of toughness. North That's Cole. Norris Cole. Norris Cole is on fire. I said that last year about him, though, and people looked at me like I was crazy. I said this kid eventually is gonna make Mario Chalmers. No, 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 no. We said that when we first saw him. Yeah, when we yeah. Started, like the first month that he played. Just get rid of that haircut. Shout well, out to Waldo Faldo. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> It's trying to be unique. No, we no, thought it's not unique. Like not anymore. The, 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 uh, w- when we saw Norris Cole that first two months of, the, of his rookie year, we thought, hey, Mario Chalmers, you're about to lose your job. And then he went cold the rest of the, yeah. the, rest of the time. Yeah, so, I mean, rookie. Well, right. yeah. But now but now he's really feeling it. Feeling it and I, I think and the, the, what is really messing things up is he's playing defense. Mm-hmm. He's playing some really, really, really good defense. And so when you have that, Mario Chalmers does become expendable. Call me crazy. I feel like the Bulls, now is the time for them to give Teague heavy minutes. Why not? Why not? That's true. Give give Teague heavy minutes. Let him get a dose of this playoff atmosphere. Then maybe you can throw a Teague, Derrick Rose at the two combo out there no. next year. No. No. Why not? Hey, crazy. So this is what I learned, right? He I'm crazy. crazy? No, 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 no. D at the two? You, didn't you yes. Tell me, you told Why? Me, you told me to call you crazy. I'm calling you crazy. So now, here's the thing. Watching Marcus Teague in the playoffs scares the living hell out of me now. Why? Because that that he looks. I mean, I understand he's a rookie. That boy looks lost. Like, he's gotten better though. He, he has. Got, he has. He's, he's gotten, gotten better. He's seen the floor. Right, right. He's basically been Larry Brown this year. My only problem with him is he can't shoot. That's my only problem. You could leave him open all day long. He might make one out of ten. But then you'll see. Flashes of brilliance where he gets the ball up the sword and puts so much pressure on right. the defense, get yeah. to the bucket. That's one thing I like about him. He does go Attack, to the rack. He attacks hard. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'm, but I'm saying, just saying, but when he goes to the side, he gets trapped. He has to call timeout. Wait, know, that's a know, rookie move. Like, I know, he right. don't know how to that's get like, out. Right. Like, Nate, like Nate Robinson did three or four times last game. Yeah, but that's Nate. <laughs> See, I, I don't that's buy that. Nate. You can't kill that kid. <laughs> and here's a veteran that's been about four or five teams in the league and say, that's Nate. Is Manny being Manny now? Come on, BC. Come on, man. But that's Nate Robinson, man. We've seen him get in them situations and get out of them. With a rookie, it's, it's a panic. You don't really want that. But you can't put it all on Nate because you noticed there weren't a lot of big men flashing to the middle either. No. So, Carlos Boozer. They were, they were but at the post. You, but they you get what you get, though. Remember I said that a long time ago. You Don't did. be mad because he's a 17 and 10 guy. Be mad that you paid $450,000 for an 88 Camry. You paid Ben's <laughs> price. Just like a person with bad credit. Right. You know, you Buy pay, here, pay how here. much you paid? 
Seven twenty dollars for an eighty-eight Intrepid a month. Right. <laughs> Damn. What's your credit? Score? I mean, you know what, Boozer. Great in the regular season. Once again, disappears in the playoffs. When we come back, more with Chrissy and BC. We're gonna get, what we got next, man. We're, we're still talking about the Bulls. Bulls we, right. we, we spend so much time with the WNBA and, and stop hating, man. Please it's gonna be a great hating. season. Oh my god. Go Sky. We'll yeah. be right back. Sports and Blood.